This is Ricky Hughes with Sheen Magazine. Yeah, it was a you know interesting journey moving from music to film and TV. And you know, I started off at Priority Records and ran the international department for the record label. And that ended up being really fulfilling, had a great time. I worked with some really great artists. We all kind of were babies in our career from Ice Cube to Snoop to No Limit to Master P to, you know, the whole group. So it's always really great to be able to grow with people and see them, you know, as they grow. We're 20 year olds, you know, selling millions of records at a time. So it was kind of the wild, wild west for us, literally, because we were West Coast music. As I was running the international department, I spent a lot of time overseas and I realized that the music industry was going in the toilet. And I said, you know what, I'm getting off the ship, guys, I'm out. So I had them buy me out the last part of my contract with the label and I just decided I was going to produce. I got to start in comedy working with Ralph Farquhar and Carl Craig. One of our first projects we did was the Big Black Comedy Show, which was on Fox. And we had you know, a lot of success with the project and we just continued to work together from that point on. You know, one thing I can say is, you know, Fear can never be a, you know, an aspect of what you do. And we were fearless, only because we were ignorant. We just didn't know. We didn't know to be scared. We didn't know that, oh, you don't normally just sell 500,000 units on one of your artist's bodyguard. Like, you, you don't know that. So for us, we just did what we thought was right. We didn't really have any structured budgets. We were able to say, hey, go sell some records. And we're like, cool, not sure what that means, but we'll go do it. So we gathered up our friends and people that we knew and we started just getting the music out there. And because the music was so new, the genre of gangster rap was really new, and but it was taking off, it was making a lot of money. You know, one thing we realized is that, you know, New York, hip hop might've started in New York, but West Coast showed everyone how to make money at it. And we just made it the best way we could. But we had a lot of fun during the process. You know, I got to tour the world, with some of the best artists that are still the greatest artists today, so I've made some lifelong friends. And you know, it was just an exciting time. I don't know if I could ever do it again, though. <laughs> when I started Magic Lemonade, I had been working with John Cosette for many years, and then when our dear John passed, um, Jesse Collins, I worked with Jesse so we can keep you know, a lot of the shows. And then after you know, we had been working together for some, I don't know, about 13 years, I realized it was time to hang out my own shingle for Magic Lemonade. So it wasn't the easiest transition for everyone involved, but I knew it was something that was really important for me. It was important that I owned my content. It was important that I started on projects that really meant something that resonated with me. And so, you know, there's times where it was really scary, but I, once again, I didn't know to be scared. I just, you know, stuck my chest out, hung my shingle out, and got to work and started getting involved with projects that I really loved and cared about. The process of producing is, is interesting. It's never the same, but then it's always the same at the same time. Uh, we always start off with a concept, with an idea. Working with Dave is always fulfilling, exciting, never a dull moment as you can imagine. For us, it's about really surrounding his creativity, making sure he looks good, sounds good, and that we support him in every way, shape, or form. We start off with, you know, content, watching the shows, figuring out where we're going with it. You know, Stan comes up with the exact way that it needs to be captured. We've been shooting Dave for many years, so we kind of know his nuances and how to make sure that we have those on film where everyone can enjoy it. And I don't know if you noticed, but all of Dave's specials feel different than any other comedy specials. There's a way that we shoot it that gives the audience an intimate environment. It's important for Dave. Uh, Dave is not into seeing a bunch of cameras. He really just wants to have a true experience with the audience. So it's our job to really make sure that all those things happen. Well, I stay inspired in what I do, especially when it comes to Dave, because there's always, a, we have to always challenge ourselves on how can we raise the bar. And we don't always know right away. Sometimes we take our cues from the environment, from the venue that we're in. A lot of times it's Dave's subject matter because it's, you know, usually unconventional and we just trust the genius of it. So a lot of times we raise the bar, we just look to challenge ourselves and raise the bar as much as possible every time. Like, how can we do better? How can we do different? You know, stand-up is uh, the same a lot of the times. You have a guy and a microphone and a stage, so how can we make that better? Well, the moment that I realized that 
I was the first African-American woman to win the Emmy for the Outstanding Variety Special was priceless. I mean, I'm sitting there on the stage next to Stan Lathan and we heard all the great names, the, you know, we were up against Carpool Karaoke, who wins everything, you know. We had Carol Burnett had her comeback, which was an amazing show. You know, we had um, the Martins there. It, it was just, you know, such a big category. We were just honored to be in the room. And we heard the song, Killing Me Softly, which is Dave's favorite song. And we kind of looked at each other and we're like, get up. <laughs> so we got up and we start walking and start moving forward. And we saw, I saw John Legend who was at the, at the edge and he had just, Got in his EGOT and he kind of gave a thumbs up and we looked with a nod and then I remember that the guy right ahead of us had tripped on the stairs and I was like, oh my gosh, we can't trip. Like no matter what, I just remember saying no matter what, we can't trip. So I was just focusing on one step at a time and we got up there and it was so amazing to look out amongst my peers and to be able to say thank you for honoring us with this moment. And you know, a lot of blood, sweat and tears went into it. So it was really exciting to have that moment, I was humbled and excited. For you know, any woman, especially in a position of power or looking to become in a position of power, first thing I say is first figure out how to be of service. You know, it's our job to be of service. And whatever that means to you, you should go for it. Forget about fear, it doesn't have a place at all in any of your choices. And just be honest and true to yourself. And one thing I've learned is to not worry about being successful but how can I be useful?